What are we doing? I don't know, we're on our own. <laughs> We've been left on our own with literally nothing. Oh. A note from Mike. He's got a very dainty hand. Hello, <laughs> boys. While Barry's on holiday and I'm off having a baby, I thought it would be fun to challenge you to another recipe from our favourite book. Oh, yay. One of our favourite books. Please turn to page 677. We're making Zephyr. Good luck. Love Mike. Good luck to him, baby. Right, it's a stewed duck, stewed or braised duck, stuffed duckling. This one. Zef zephyrs of duck. Zephyr de Canade. And it says, see zephyrs of wild duck, page 696. Well, that's a pointless recipe. Well, just send us to 696. It's a zephyr of wild duck. Any idea what that is before we start? No, but what we do know about this book and why we love it is everything you need is inside it somewhere. Make panada. I don't actually know what it is, but it only has four ingredients. Water, flour, butter and salt. And what does that remind you of? A little pastry. Duck Not empanada, milk. just panada. Like envelope. Maybe we don't put the thing inside it. So just a envelope. <laughs> <laughs> We're going to read the recipe, have a little bit of thinking time and then we'll get cracking. To make zephyr of wild duck. It's about five minutes of reading, and we think we have a plan. I'm making a panada. Which is very similar to shoe paste, I would say. Water and butter in a pan, brought up to a boil, and then flour beaten in until it leaves the side of the bowl seasoned with salt. And then we'll let that cool down. How much does half a pint of water weigh? 280 mil. Meanwhile, I'm making one of the sauces that we need because that sauce then goes into the other sauce to make the thing we need. So I'm starting with mirepoix, which is onion, carrot, pancetta, bay leaves, peppercorns, all kind of sweated off. What's fun already is having read through this, there are a couple of things that off the top of my head I would have done through gut feel, but because we've cooked from this book and or the Repertoire de la Cuisine previously, we already know. And that's that mirepoix traditionally has the bacon or the ham in it, and that a fleuron of puff pastry, well, we've done those before. So this isn't the first time that we've cooked from Mrs. Beaton's cookery and household management. It's 160 years old, this book, and it was the best-selling book of its time. A lot of it is quite outdated in terms of the household management side of things. And the recipes take some effort to follow, I think is probably a nice way of putting it. It is a rabbit warren of instruction that references other places in the book that reference other places in the book. They've got rabbit. Yeah. It's in the next section, if you and want. The next se we're in the game section, but actually even in the venison, hare and rabbit section, it is, by its very nature, quite old-fashioned, very British in its approach. My water, butter and salt mixture is now boiling, and I, I can now gradually add in my sifted flour. I, I would typically throw it all in and then beat it together so you don't get lumps. Because you certainly need to be beating at the same time. It's the basis to any shoe. And the key is to weigh out all the ingredients and then not let too much of that water evaporate as you beat it all together. That is a slightly lumpy panada. Do you want me to carry on whisking it? No, that's fine. Lovely. Oh. A zephyr, translated into English as zephyr, is a fine cotton or a soft, gentle breeze. In this dish, reflecting the texture. If that was beaten nice and smooth and was the different ratio, you'd then pipe it, and as it bakes in the oven, you end up with shoe buns, and they are light as anything, because the air inside of them kind of does their thing. The raising you, agent is the moisture. Do you want me to put that back in the pan and give it a good beat? No, I think we're gonna, we're gonna be blending up to a paste anyway. What I don't understand is once we add the next step of the recipe to it, how it's ever gonna be light. Remove meat from duck, chop and pound it until very smooth. And then we're gonna add this and an egg. So essentially we're making a meat paste. Yes. If you're enjoying this, there are some small things you can do that make a big difference to us. Like the video. Subscribe if you aren't. Click the notification bell and select all. 
Thanks. This is a duck. We're making zephyr of duck, but it told us to go to the page and the recipe, which is zephyr of wild duck. Now, why would those two things be separate? So the recipe is exactly the same. There is only one change, and that's the duck. Whereas the recipes all fall on the fowl section, where we're just talking about ducks. So this is a duck, and I'm led to believe that it wasn't wild. Correct. That means it's probably slightly fattier, probably slightly uh, meatier than a wild duck, which would have been doing a lot more running. So maybe we definitely don't need the duck fat in this dish. How big was a wild duck in 1860 whatever? Oh. A domestic duck can be twice the size of a wild duck. Consider this when making the dish. Would you like to take the board behind, pop it next to this one, and cut that duck ready for saute? Basically, bone out a duck. Really silly question. Is it the same as dissecting a chicken? <sighs> yes. The bones are mostly in the same place. They're just a slightly different shape. Sorry. Now we've got the mirepoix base and veg all softened and lovely in with the stock. That's going to bubble for half an hour and then we're going to add in tomato and that's what makes it a Spanish sauce. I think I've butchered a duck. Looks good. You've got two breasts, two drumsticks, two wings off of that. Pretty good job. Yeah. I think we'll take the skin off the breast because we don't want it too fatty and then we'll make a paste from it. So the only other thing is to debone the wings and legs. So there are two sauces at play for our dish. We have sauce espanola. That is what we finish our entire plate with. But we also need sauce salmi. Salmi, which is 50% white stock and 50% sauce espanola. This sauce is shallot, mushroom, sauteed off, and then we go in with a lighter stock and you can finish it with red currant jelly and a little bit of port. Have you ever made anything like this before? This here, yes. Right. Uh, basically mirepoix, a brown stock, and then finished with tomato. I'm gonna be honest, I used a tin of tomatoes. Or some passata, we've actually got fresh tomato here. But this sauce, the salmi sauce, no. I'm not sure Mrs. Beaton in the late 1800s would have been using winter tomatoes from Spain, but <laughs> it's what we've got left over from a previous filming day, so they're going into our sauce. Feels like you're quite privileged to be able to cook with me today. <laughs> so, I, seeing as I've won a couple of battles against other chefs recently. The tables are turning, I'll be honest. Quarter of a pint of that. And our game stock. So, got my duck and I need to chop it and then I'm going to pound it. So we're going to do that in a mixer, right? Yeah, chop it into small pieces, yeah. we'll glitz it in a food processor. I'm going to finish the sauce by thickening it with bermogne because I should have put the flour in at the start and made a velouté, but I skipped that bit um, and our salmi sauce is done. I've added in my duck, a panada, an egg, and mixed it to create this beautifully pink thing. I'm now gonna add salt, pepper, and it says add mixed spice to taste. I'm not going to taste that, because it's raw duck. So we'll just add a bit. See, the thing is, some of these recipes are very precise, like an eighth of a pint of sauce, or yes. a quarter of a pint of this. Some of them just say half a glass, but it doesn't tell you how big the glass is. Oh, no, that, yeah, that's an issue. So how big's a port glass for serving? 120 mil? Oh, that feels like a lot. That's a small yeah. glass of wine, but obviously it's fortified. A 750 mil bottle should serve 10 people. So 75 So mil. 75. So we need so 35. So we want 37. Th yeah. That's about right then. So it was, yeah. <laughs> I mean, that was my gut, was basically given that, but we don't know. Now I've added the mixed spice and the port in, that smells like Christmas. It has that kind of seasonal flavour, but that's because a wild duck would only be caught between like the autumn and early spring. Because they're good at hiding for the rest of the year? No, you leave them to do their ducky things so there's more for next year. 
these things. Whatever ducks get up to in the spring. I mean, I'm trying to tiptoe around the subject, <laughs> but you know, quack quack. <laughs> <laughs> what does that mean? Sauce that Espanola has finished. I'm now going to strain it off and then season it to taste with the Spanish drink sherry and a little bit of red currant jelly. The majority of this will go over our dish at the end, but some of it gets mixed into this, which becomes our salmi sauce, which goes into this. That's really good. It's pretty damn good. Yeah. yeah. It's got that essence of the she crab soup we had. Oh, in Charleston. the US, in Charleston, yeah. that was finished with sherry at the end. Yes, yeah, yeah. Now that is a very sweet sherry, but similar kind of vibes. That also needs adding to your paste. Lovely. <laughs> so now we cook this. Two things need to happen to it before that. One, pass it through a sieve to make sure it's really, really smooth, and two, make sure the seasoning's good. Given it's raw duck and raw egg, the best way to do that is a dollop on a plate that we microwave so that we can both have a taste. I mean, it still looks exactly the same. That is distinctly better than I was expecting. Yeah, it's like cooked pate. Yeah, in its warm form, <laughs> it is cooked pate. Yeah. But lighter and bouncier. Is it like fine cotton or a soft, gentle breeze? It's just like that. Then we're on the right track. How many of these? Such an angry little man. <laughs> How many of these in a portion? So it says make eight to serve four. I've realised there's only two of us here, so we only need to make four. I don't know, Dom, can you spin around and show everyone else that's here? <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to put it out there, I'm not making two for everyone. <laughs> Let me scrape your bottom and see how close we're getting. <laughs> Stop quacking! So I was hoping these were going to rise as we steam them, but there's every chance, because it's 50% protein, that they'll actually just shrink back. shrink back. So we better fill them to about there. So like, like in the instructions where it says fill? We're going to cook them in a bain-marie, so in an oven, but in a roasting tray with boiling water and then uh, tin foil over the top. And in the meantime, we can cook some fleuron, which James and I learned in a previous episode is crescents of puff pastry and we can work some spinach. So we're not doing the buttered paper on the top like in the recipe? Oh. Glad you're here, Jay. <laughs> Me too. Could you cut four cartouches? <laughs> and another bit of precise work from Mrs. Beaton. No time or temperature for the cooking, just till it's done. Until firm and set. Glad you measured that. Ta-da. <laughs> <laughs> This stops them getting too hot, because in theory they'll never get hotter than steam, and they go into the oven. Right, let's make some fleuron and wilt some spinach. You're doing the fleurons of puff pastry. Yeah. We can half a glacier cherry, that's fine. The last garnish is spinach. Yeah. What kind of spinach are we making? The one we've been given. Because I've looked up spinach in the book. Right. <laughs> And the first thing there is boiled spinach, which is, I'm guessing we want to do boiled spinach. We could do boiled spinach. Cool, so we need spinach, butter, cream, and salt and pepper. We need to wash it in at least three waters. We don't have a tap that works. Right. Wipe those in the other same oven. I don't think we want to cream it because the way she's asked us to plate it, it's spinach in the brown. middle and the sauce over the top and I think it will just bleed into our otherwise lovely sauce. Funny, read the instructions again. Put the wet leaves into a saucepan without additional water. Cook slowly until tender, about 15 minutes, stirring the spinach in the pan occasionally. The pan should have a tightly fitting lid. Drain well, pressing out the water. Reheat in the butter. That's a terrible way to cook spinach. <laughs> I agree with the no added water, but a little bit of butter maybe seasoned nicely and then a hot, fierce cook and it will cook in not 15 minutes, but about 15 seconds. Halved. 
halved. Her way says add it now with a lid and just let it do it for 15 minutes. That's going to be so sad. So sad. So sad, but we're doing it, or so sad and therefore we're ignoring it. I feel like it should be the latter. Especially the little lid that fits. What a ridiculous little dish. Excuse you. <laughs> Wasn't me, Ben. It's my drawers. I guess that's it. <laughs> right, can we see if they turn out? They're gonna be hot because they've been in an oven. Yeah, careful. Oh God, I spent my whole afternoon doing this. <laughs> <laughs> don't worry, don't laugh, they're not done yet, they're not finished yet. We're gonna decorate it like that. Oh, and like be, that. that will be better. There we go. <laughs> Can we dry them first before you... <laughs> well, that's just butter, we buttered the moulds, didn't we? Butter's good. I'm just making sure you're doing this properly. Turn the moulds out into a circle, place a fleuron of puff pastry on each and half a glacé cherry. Pile spinach in centre and pour the hot espagnole sauce around. Right, you ready? The sauce is good. And pour the hot espagnole sauce round. Not on top, round. <laughs> you're a nightmare. <laughs> that, Jamie, what's it called again? <laughs> <laughs> what are we making? <laughs> that is Zephyr of Duck. Just as Mrs. Beaton would have liked it. Nearly as Mrs. Beaton would have liked it. I know it's only you and I, but sometimes it's nice to have some moments at a table and enjoy a nice meal. You ordered something in. <laughs> is this what you pictured when we started? I had no idea, Zephyr du Canard. I had no idea what we were making. I didn't really expect this. I know the sauce tastes great. Yeah. I'm just confused by the rest. Yeah. The texture of cat food. You say cat food, I was gonna say lamb's testicle. Yes, it is. I know exactly what you mean, unfortunately. <laughs> <laughs> Cheers. Cheers. It is surprisingly, after forcing it through that sieve and steaming it in a bain-marie... It's very smooth. ...light and moussey. <laughs> it's like fine cotton. <laughs> Just cooked. Mmm. I mean, I know what a glacé cherry is like. But with this... I don't think I need it. <laughs> the I mean, sauce has got a sweetness from the red currant jelly. Yeah. And the sherry. The pastry's nice. I don't think it needs the cherry. If that was served to me, in perhaps a more appetising shape, as a literal starter, I could wholly see it. The sauce is very rich, and I'm, I'm ch chuffed with how sort of, the consistency, but also how glossy it is. Mm. And it tastes great. I feel like this is the kind of thing where you'd go to a fancy restaurant in France, and you'd order something off the menu in French, recognising canard. And you go, oh, that's duck. Um, and then this turns up, and you go, oh, the sauce is lovely. But you know what? It's nice enough. I would have no idea how much effort anyone had gone to to make it. Yeah, that's very true. Probably best left in the 1860s would be my summary. If somebody gave me a whole duck, there are 101 things I would rather do to it. <laughs> <laughs> in summary, I think the flavour's good. The texture is very pappy. Mm. I think the sauce is the winner there. Yeah. There's nothing wrong with a bit of steamed spinach and everyone loves pub pastry. Well, comment down below, let us know what you think. Did we pass? Did, did we do the dish justice? Would you cook anything like this at home? Do you know what's remarkable? What? Since the internet has been invented, I'm not sure anyone has made this dish, taken a photo of it and shared it. This is the first. The internet's first canard. De Zephyr sauvage. de canard. Zephyr de canard sauvage. <laughs>